All right, here we go. Yo, you even start watching the replay. Are you gonna say this guy stinks? All right, you should you should be going for this ball 100%. This is your ball. Like you have no reason to just sit here and net. Like maybe maybe the read might be a little tough, but uh. You need to, you know, the ball's going slow. You need to get out of net. Your teammates will be back. Um, this guy should not be touching the ball, but I think he probably touches it because he realizes you're not going, potentially. Where'd you go? But this is your ball, and you're fine to go for this. You have full boost. You're good to go. It looks like you're lagging a little bit. Usually, you can see the lag in the replays. Also, right here, look at you're at 60-something boost. Um, when you're full speed, you don't need to boost as long as you're not turning. So if you're going straight here, like if you line yourself up with the ball or like where the ball is going to be, and then boost to get to full speed, you don't have to boost again, so you can actually save boost this way. So you see how you're full boost now with 31 boost left, and there's also you're still full speed with 14. You don't need to use this boost just just to use it, you know. You should be grabbing these pads on the way back too. You just dodged these two. Um, Collecting pads as you're like within your rotation or just rotating in general gets you it it legit will rank you up an entire rank above like what you're what you already are. If you just grab pads as you're rotating, you're gonna instantly improve because you're going to have more boost. But people don't even think the pads exist. Again, grab some pads, you're still at zero, so you need to be grabbing pads. There's a full boost so you can grab it now. But you should have been grabbing pads that entire time because if you just grab four pads, you're already at 40 boosts anyway. 48 specifically. So you might as well start grabbing them. Nice. I was gonna say, if your teammate's going like this, it, you know, it depends, I guess, on the right. If you can actually tell he's missing this, then, you know, it's fine to go. But I would just wait to see if he misses it before you decide to go, because he's going, he's like cutting the entire field. But just see. Just see. See if your teammate misses it first. Oh? Okay, there it is, that's the goal, that's the goal. <gasps> Hold on, how did this, how did this happen? You gotta hit center. And then you see your bulb right? Yeah, that was good. Uh, your teammate's cutting the entire field. Keep in mind when you're looking at this, your teammate cannot see you. Um, you know, this might be your ball to go for, you never know, but your teammate can't see you, but you can see him. Oh, what are these camera settings? This lobby's a clusterfuck of camera settings. Um, but your teammate can't see you, that's the main point. Thank you. And so since he since he can't see you, you need to realize that, you know, he can't he can't see you, so you need to make the decision of your last man back essentially. So you don't go up. Right? Cause now it's creating this awkward thing where you need to backtrack and it looks like you're not really comfortable reading this ball off the corner at all. What I would do actually I don't know if I would do this because I don't know if you trust yourself on the backboard, but any ball that's in the corner. Any ball that's in the corner, whether it's rolling like this, this way, or it's bouncing up this way and rolling up here, or it's going to go like this and bounce out, these are all perfect opportunities to go to the backboard. So learning how to do backboard defense is super important, especially for stuff like this, because you see it's just bouncing and you can't do anything. Right? If you just actually drove up um, the backboard there, and you know, maybe, don't panic. Don't panic, but there's a good chance you could just get to that ball. I think you're in a pretty good spot here. Wait for your two. Why are you backwards though? <laughs> you're in like a pretty good spot. Like this is good. Um, you should not be going backwards. You should be like facing right here. And like kind of trailing the play. You don't want to just force yourself into the play. 
because you want to wait for your teammates to get out of this corner, out of this mess. Your teammate looks like he's going to go, so I would still be patient with him. Um, so I wouldn't really go for this just yet. Again, grab pads on your way back. It's good that you look for your teammate to see if he's going. But again, this is his this is his ball. And the only reason I say this is because, like, even though he's not going, I think a lot of times at lower ranks, it's better to just, to just do a full rotation instead of cutting. Because nobody's going to expect you to cut anyway. Even if you should. Nobody's going to expect you to cut anyway. Um, and they're just going to double commit, triple commit, whatever. Like, if you just do a full rotate back, do the full recycle symbol, you know? Go behind your teammate here, let him go. I feel like you're better off. Unless, like, somebody's starting a dribble specifically, then, then you cut off, but... Here's awkward. Now the ball goes mid, so they have a free shot. So now they have a free shot. Okay. And then you get the ball mid. Good. Again, you're looking for um, your teammates. I like that you're actually using rear view and um, the right stick to look for people. Because people don't even do that in, like, Grand Champ. And it's super important in plenty of situations where you should be looking at, like... I, I, there's a... Oh my god. There's a point where, like, it kind of becomes, like, okay, my teammate should be here. Uh, he should be over here unless, unless like they get bumped or something. But there's a lot of times where there's just like a there's like a fluidity to rotations. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, that's how it goes. There's like a there's like a norm to rotation, so you kind of expect where somebody will be, so you can try to eventually fifty it to an area or hit it over to open space in that area and stuff like that. This uh, this is fine. This is really scary that you go to the left here because this looks really spooked. Um. Really spooky, I mean. Like, again, you're fine here. You don't need to panic. Like, sure, the ball's going towards your net, but it's going three miles an hour, right? You don't need to rush to do this 180 thing. Although, it is a good touch. It is a good touch. That's painful, though. Um, I think this also this happens because you don't really take your time on this touch right here. You're kind of panicked. Maybe because that guy's close. And then this weird 180. All you had to do was go backwards... Right, this way. I'll go back one more time. Instead of doing this 180 that you do. So you do it really weird. Where is it? Right here. Instead, just start trailing back towards the net. And then hit the ball towards the corner. You go to the corner, get the boost, and then you follow the ball. The route and try to get another clear down the field. <laughs> you need to review my gameplay so they absolutely rip into me. I'm down. <laughs> um yeah yeah as long as you get replays we can we can set a day we can set a day to do it just give me some nice replays Also, just uh, one thing, I would recommend changing your camera settings. Like, camera settings are mostly preference, but most of the pro players have, like, near the same camera settings. And, like, I don't really know if that's, like, the best thing or if it's, like, perfect or whatever. But I think if the pros are all using nearly the same thing, you should kind of go towards what the pros are using. I think you're a bit too zoomed out on your camera settings. So I, what I would do is just look up your favorite pro player, copy their camera settings, and then you're basically as good as them. Okay, we all want to see this. 41 boost. Get the touch. Get a nice double touch. Grab pads on your way back here. I don't think you should be going for this ball. Because your, your team... It, the ball is rolling back to, towards your side, sure. But it's not as scary as you think. So, because your teammate is back here. So if you don't touch it, it's even easier for your teammate. So now I would be trying to get pads. You miss one. Two. Three. You shouldn't want 80. It's not your ball. You don't even need to go for it. Just get pads and get behind your team. What you should be doing is cutting across this side of the field, grabbing these pads the entire time, and then playing like this. This is where your car should be facing and where your car should be after this, after you grab those pads. The cutoff isn't necessary because it should be your teammate's ball and you have no boost afterwards anyway. You're just sitting in the play with zero boost, which is fine at some sometimes, but um, a lot of times, you know, you want to have that boost with you. This is similar to the other one that was heading towards net. Again, it's where it's like, 
You can get to the, this is perfectly fine ball to go for. You just misread it. Um, but you don't need to panic. You don't need to just rush at the ball, right? And again, your low boost going for the bull. I think you really need to... I, w I would recommend playing 1v1s. And the only reason I say that is because, like, yeah, 1v1s suck. But one, it really helps you get the hang of, like, ball control and dribbling. And, you know, when you hit the ball in a bad spot. And then also, boost pad pathing. That's, like, the number one thing. And you constantly... I don't, I don't think you've grabbed, like, a single pad in this game. I Obviously, you probably have, but... The fact that you're not going for them, I think, means you should play 1v1s. You, you don't grab any. Like, look, you're dodging. There you go. You got one on accident. There's another one. But so, look, look, you literally just weaved out of them. It's like, they're not traffic cones, man. You should be hitting them, not avoiding them. <laughs> All four. <laughs> All four. That's, I think that's what you need to work on 100%. Also, adjust the camera settings a little bit. This is fine. You have possession here. Look. There you go. Take the possession. Good first touch. Another nice touch. Oh, mid. Okay, try to get back behind your teammate now. Don't cut. Get behind your team. You cut. Just go behind your team. Because when your teammates clear like that, more than likely what happens is they just clear right back. So if you get used to that, um, you're going to stop cutting the play. Oh, there you go. There's a pad. You got one. There's an entire field of pads. And you know the thing is, at ranks like this, nobody grabs pads. So if you actually grab... These these pads are free. Nobody grabs them. You'll never get boost star from pads. At higher ranks, people actually take your fucking pads from you. They take that shit. So they know you don't take them. Or so you don't get them. But look, one... That, that one's gone. That doesn't count, I guess. Uh, okay, you missed that one, but that was gone anyway. There's another one, another one, another one. Actually, wait, no, you got that one. But still. That's a lot of missed pads. That's a lot of juice. A lot of juice in the tank. That, I would just, again, I would just go back here. Like, it's fine to stay here. Like, your touch is... You have a little bit of a panic touch, but right here, I would stay close and then shadow him. What I don't know if you know what shadow defense is, but basically, if he's on the ball like this, you will stay facing the net and you will trail the ball backwards. And that is another thing that's super important to learn in 1v1s. So as the ball goes this way, if you realize you can't get it, you leave it for your teammate, but at least you shadowed him and you stopped him from dribbling. Uh, I don't think this is worth going for a demo. Maybe it works, but you might as well just stay. Like, your teammate has a pass mid, and, like, if you demo, who's going to shoot? Who's going to shoot it? So, like, if he pass, does he pass it mid? I mean, dude, you could have scored that. Like, it, it, you know, it, it's a slim chance, right? But this angle is possible. First guy misses it. You're right here. Slot that bitch. Anyway, OT we go. Get the uh, the big boost, okay. Just leave, let your teammate go. Don't turn, go behind your teammate. Go behind your teammate. Stop doing this drifting thing. You should complete your rotations. Don't just cut like this. Because you should be going behind him. So hopefully, you know, it's, you know, whatever rank this actually is. So hopefully he goes and then you're behind him. 
But when you cut like this, then it makes it even more awkward. Look, you don't even get the ball. This guy's going to cut now. But look at these. These cuts are so awkward for everybody. So now he misses because he gets faked. And then now you're you're going. Just don't even worry about cutting into the play. Again, I think you should play 1v1s and prioritize the pads. But if you are playing 3s, if you are playing 2s, make sure you actually complete your rotations. Eventually, the more you play, you'll start to know when to cut into plays. Um, this is another moment where you should be... Look, you're at 76 boosts. 76 boosts in their net. By the time you get there, you're at 0. If you just went over here, you went out here. Doesn't matter about the demo. And now you have an easier touch going this way onto the ball. Because it's gonna, you know, you're right here. You just go this way. So you would have like full boost essentially, which you should. Oh yeah, full boost anyway. But this ball wouldn't be as awkward. I don't think I really need to watch much more of the replay, to be to be real with you. I think it, this sounds really dumb. <laughs> Trust me, I know. But you should really just learn how to hit the ball. <laughs> and by saying that, I mean go into custom trainings, practice aerials, practice ground shots, like the power shots, <laughs> and play 1v1s. Because when you play 1v1s, you touch the ball a lot more, so you get used to it, and there's actually an opponent to try to beat. So, like, free play is cool and all, but you don't actually play for somebody, so it's it's too easy. You can't lose in free play. But if you're playing 1v1s, you can actually learn what you're doing wrong. Um, change your camera settings, play 1v1s, learn boost pads, learn the pathing. Grab them. Make sure you grab them. You're doing good by using your rear view and your cameras to actually look around and see what's going on. Go to custom trainings. Work on power shots and aerials, basic aerials. You don't need to do, you don't, don't work on flip resets. Don't work on double touches. Don't work on air dribbles. It's useless at your rank. Don't even worry about it.